Welcome to today's tutorial. In this video series, I will show you step-by-step step how to make your first 3D product animation in Blender. We will start with modeling, texturing, animation, and rendering. By the end of the tutorial, you will be able to make your product animation look more realistic. Let's get started. For this tutorial, I will use this reference photo. I have provided a link in the description to download so you can follow along with the tutorial. Now open Blender, then go into Edit, then Preference. In the add-on section, search for Import Images Plane, make sure you check the box. Delete everything by pressing A to select all, then X to delete. Then go into Side View by pressing Numpad 3. Select your reference image, drag, and drop it into the viewport. To align the image to the center of the origin, select the image, press Shift plus S, and set the selection to the origin. I will reduce the opacity to something like 0.4. Scale the image a little bit, then press G to grab along the Z-axis until it aligns correctly with this line across the Y-axis. For the primitives, I will use a cylinder. Press Shift plus A, then add the cylinder. Press G, then 1, to position the cylinder on top of the grid. Go into Edit Mode, then press S to scale until it matches the reference photo. Select the bottom vertices. Grab along the Z-axis to this edge, then press A to extrude, then scale. Add a loop cut here by pressing Ctrl plus R, then scale to match the reference. Extrude again to here, then scale. Add another loop cut here and continue to align to our reference image. Select the bottom face and press I to insert. Extrude and grab along the Z-axis, then scale a little bit. Insert again, then grab along the Z-axis to something like this. With faces selected, press Ctrl plus B to add bevel. Insert once more, then press M to merge vertices at the center. Now we have finished modeling the bottom of the can. Let's go into side view again and start modeling the top side of the can. Go into wireframe mode. Select the top vertices, then press G to grab along the Z-axis. I will start at this line. Then press E to extrude, bringing the vertices here. Scale the vertices to the size of the reference photo. Add a loop cut here, then scale to match this shape. I will add another loop cut here to continue matching the reference photo. Select these edges, extrude and scale until they match this line. Then extrude once more and reposition the vertices here. Press Ctrl plus R, add a loop cut here, then hold Shift to provide smooth movement. Set it close to these vertices here. While holding Shift plus Alt, double click this edge to select the loop. Then grab inside along the Z axis to have a shape like this. Select the top face, then insert something like this. Press X to delete faces. Now we have to do is make it look good. First of all, I will add a bevel to the edge to remove sharpness. To do this, just select the edge, press Ctrl plus B, scroll with the middle mouse and add two segments. I will do the same to the other edges. Now it is time to add subdivision surfaces so we can see how the high poly will look like. Press Ctrl plus 3 to add subdivision surfaces, or you can add here under the Modifier tab. Right-click to shade smooth. Now it looks good. But I see there is sharpness here. I will remove the bevel to have a smooth angle. Just select the edges then press Ctrl plus X to dissolve them. For now, let's disable the subdivision surface modifier in the viewport so we have good performance while modeling the top of the can. For the top modeling, I will use this reference. The download link is in the description. Just go into top view by pressing numpad 7, grab the image, and then drop it into the viewport. With the image selected, press Shift plus S to set the selection to the origin. Then scale it to match the size of the model. Just grab it at the top and continue to scale to make sure it fits our model correctly. 
Now I will hide some of this shape. Go into edit mode, then select these top faces. Press shift plus H. Reduce the opacity of the reference image so we have a clear view. Select these edge then scales to match this second circle. With those edges selected, extrude down to something like this. From here, I will continue to repeat the same procedures to extrude and scale to match the reference as close as possible. I think now it looks nice. I will continue to adjust the position of the edges. I will bring these edges down to something like this. Add a loop cut here, then scale while hold Shift plus Z to snap along Z axis. With those loops selected, press Ctrl plus B so we can have a curved shape like this. Now let's continue modeling the rest of the shape. For this part, I will select these circles, press Shift plus D to duplicate, then scale. Continue to scale the circle until it fits this shape. Press P to separate by selection. Let's go into edit mode, then scale the circle again. But for now, snap it along X axis. Now select the half part, then delete, so we can use the mirror modifier. Go into the Modifiers tab and add the Mirror Modifier. Make sure you enable Clipping. Activate Proportional Editing over here so we can easily match the vertices to the reference photo. Select these vertices, then press G to move. To control the size of Proportional Editing, scroll with the middle mouse. From now on, try to match these vertices until they fit correctly into our shape. With those vertices selected, extrude then right-click to confirm the position. Press Alt plus S to scale the edge down to something like this. I will go into perspective and adjust the position of the edge. Press F to fill the faces. Rotate the face a little bit by pressing R. I will hide the base shape to have a good view while modeling this top side. Now insert the faces, but you will see the faces have been divided into two parts. To fix this, just apply the mirror modifier. Now insert it until it reaches this first line. Delete one side of the face again and add a mirror modifier, so we can model easily with one side. Select these edges, then extrude and try to match them to this circle. Delete these faces, select these edges, and then press F to fill. I will add three loop cuts here, then continue to fill the faces by pressing F. Select these edges, then press F to fill in the faces. Apply the mirror modifier so we can insert the face and start modeling this closure area. Select faces and insert to match this second circle. Insert again and align to match this circle. I will use proportion editing again to align these vertices to have a bend shape like this. Now let's add these lines for the score of the can. Select these vertices, then grab them here to match those lines. Now continue to align the vertices with our reference image. Press C to use circle selection, then select these faces. With those faces selected, press I to insert something like this. Add a loop cut here, then grab vertices along the Z axis. Just move them a little bit down. Select these vertices and press M to merge at them center. Then position the vertices to match this line. I will do the same to these edges. Let's add subdivision surfaces to see what the high poly will look like. Now let's finish modeling this closure area. Select this face, insert faces, and then move down along the Z axis to have the shape like this. Continue to align the vertices to match our reference image. Once you have done a line, press I to insert faces, then delete faces. I will use Grid Fill to fill this area. Press Ctrl plus F. Change the span count so we have a nice and clean topology. 
Now we have finished modeling this section. It's time to start modeling this tab. I will hide this for now. For this, start by adding a circle and reducing the vertices to 16. Go into edit mode and scale until it fits this circle in our reference photo. Duplicate this circle and place it here. Now scale it until it aligns correctly with this area. Select these edges, then press F to fill faces. Take this circle, then duplicate it and scale it to align with this shape. Delete half of the circle. I will do the same to these circles and align them according to our reference. Now it's time to fill the vertices and edges. Just select them, then press F to fill the faces. The important thing is to have all quads to ensure a good edge flow. I will add support loop over here. With these vertices selected, extrude and move down along the Z axis. Add a loop cut here then scale to have the shape like this. Just do the same for this circle. Select these edges and move along the Y axis a little bit. Then select these faces. With these faces selected, extrude, scale and move them down. Then bring down a little bit along the Z axis. Add a loop cut here, then scale to have the shape like this. To modeling this rivet, select this circle and duplicate it, then scale it to fit the size of the reference photo. Use the snap tool to align the circle with these vertices. With auto merge vertices activated, join these vertices to the circle. Delete these faces and continue to move vertices. Just select these edge extrudes and scale them to here. By using the loop tool, right click and make it a circle. Now continue to extrude and position it to have a shape like this. In this case, I'll keep adding more details. Select these outer vertices, then extrude down to something like this, add a loop cut in the middle and scale out a little bit. I will unhide the other shape. To create a center panel, join this shape by pressing Ctrl plus J. Then go into edit mode, select edge and fill faces. Let's start adding bevels to remove sharp edges and adjust other details. I suggest to use two segments to have nicer and more optimized geometry. Just repeat the same on the tab. If you encounter any problems while beveling the edges, just recalculate the normal. Select all, then press Shift plus N. Select these faces, then press I to invert the selection. Rotate the faces a little bit. Use the snap tool to position the object on top of the surface. Now we have finished modeling the can and it looks pretty nice. That is it for part one of modeling the can. In the next video, we will going to add material and water condensation. I hope you have enjoyed it and learned something. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.